Hey everyone, Tony from TN3D Studio and welcome back to another V-Ray tutorial. Today I'll be showing you a simple workflow for lighting your interiors in V-Ray 5 along with some helpful tips. There are many things to consider when you are working on an interior. Usually it's a good balance between quality 3D model, proper lighting, quality textures and V-Ray materials. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to manage V-Ray's creative tools so that you can light any of your interior scenes. Before we get started, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification as well. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Let's start by gathering some references. You can filter through Pinterest, which is a great website to create mood boards and collect references. So looking through the interior images in particular, I'm looking at how natural light interacts with the space and how artificial light is used. So for the proper interior lighting, here's what we need to know. How to set up the sun and sky system in HDRIs, how to manage the advanced camera settings, how to set up the V-Ray lights, and once those are set, you can make final adjustments with the V-Ray frame buffer. So this is my model setup for this exercise. So let's go to our render settings and here you can enable the material override. Let's also move to our glass material settings. And at the very bottom here, you can uncheck the can be overridden box. And I'm also running the interactive rendering with low quality settings. The V-Ray Sun and Sky is the default system for natural light. So from our sunlight settings, let's enable the custom orientations and use both the vertical and horizontal angles to position the sun. Now the sun orientation of your model depends on many things like the number of openings and the geolocation. So you want to position it in a way that it works best for your scene. So let's quickly go over the other settings. We can leave this color here as white. For filter mode, I'm going to set this to override. The intensity multiplier increases the brightness of the sun. So usually keep the default value of one here. The size multiplier controls the physical size of the sun as well as the radius of the shadows. So if you want that soft shadow from the sunlights, you can just increase this value. And for the rest of the setting, we'll leave them as they are since this is an interior scene. So here is a test render of the sun and sky settings and you can also use this environment setting with the V-Ray dome light. By doing so, you are taking advantage of the V-Ray adaptive option, which is a smarter and more efficient way for V-Ray to sample light. So on our render settings, let's go to environment and disable the environment background. Let's open our texture and copy the environment sky. Next, let's place a new dome light on our scene. And let's paste the environment sky here. You can leave all the other settings as they are, but make sure that the adaptive dome light option is checked. And this is a quick result comparison. As you can see, the results are pretty much the same, but the adaptive dome light has a few advantage over the V-Ray sun and sky. Another option for your environment lighting is to use high dynamic range images, also known as HDRI. And these, in my opinion, are a much better solution for your natural lighting. HDRIs produce a more realistic environment light because they are captured based in the real world. So you get accurate lighting, realistic reflections and shadows, and the matching background to your environment. So to set an HDRI, let's disable our sun and the environment settings. Let's head over to our V-Ray lights and create a new dome light. And let's load our HDRI here. So depending on the HDRI, the lighting may be just fine as soon as you load it. And sometimes it can be overexposed and sometimes it can be underexposed. But whatever the case may be, you can use the rest of these parameters to make the adjustments. You can use the intensity to increase or decrease the brightness of your HDRI. 
hemisphere shows the HDRI to the horizon line and the spherical will show the HDRI past the horizon line. So it covers your entire scene in a sphere. The use transform locks the HDRI orientation with the arrow pointing to the sun's direction. And you can see that as I rotate the dome light, the sunlight is coming from the direction that this arrow is pointing to. You're free to explore all of the other options, but usually setting on HDRI is pretty simple. If you owe VRA 5 at this point, you can use the VRA light generator, which is going to take the sun and sky and HDRI and generate different interior lighting scenarios for you. So I'll have a card on the corner of the screen for a full light generator tutorial. So next we're going to talk about the V-Ray's physical camera under the render settings. Now the camera settings will help you to manage the exposure of your entire scene. So if you go to your render settings and expand the camera option, here you're going to find exposure, depth of field, white balance and other effects. As for the exposure, it controls the light sensitivity. So to keep it simple, the lower the exposure value, the brighter the image. Now if you hit this auto option, V-Ray is going to calculate the exposure of your scene. And then you can use the composition slider to further adjust the brightness. For the exposure, it is also determined by three other essential parameters. So if you expand your settings to the right and look under advanced camera settings, you will find ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Now the common effect for all of these parameters is that they will either make your image brighter or darker. Film sensitivity or ISO determines how sensitive your image is to light and it's measured in ISO values. So the higher this value, the brighter your image and the lower this value, the darker the image. Now aperture which is measured in F numbers or F stops determines how open the aperture is to let light in. Now the smaller the F number value, the larger the aperture and the brighter the image. Aside from that, the aperture also affects the depth of field. So a small aperture value will result in a narrow depth of field when it's enabled. And the last of these three parameters is shutter speed, which determines the length of time the camera shutter remains open. So the lower this shutter speed value is, the slower the shutter speed and the brighter the image. So hopefully that made a bit of sense and the, a perfect exposure is the balance between all of these three values. If you are hearing these terms for the first time, it can be a little bit difficult to understand, but that is why we sponsored with Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, dip in an existing passion, and get lost in creativity. Now, I believe that photography is a great complementary skill for 3D artists, and Photo Essentials and Justin Bridges have an excellent photography class covering the fundamentals of DSLR photography. This course shows you how to use a DSLR camera, understand the exposure, and photo composition. And I took this class to understand photography as a whole, and now I applied those skills into creating 3D renderings. Tanisha Patel also has a very easy to follow Vray for SketchUp class. This class covers a complete process of modeling SketchUp, rendering with Vray, while covering the most essential tools of the Vray render engine. So if you're interested in these classes or other topics, the first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. The Skillshare is created especially for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. So we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So we have our HDRI and camera settings set. So now we can add the V-Ray lights. When you're adding these lights, you want to think about emphasizing on the artificial light sources, like your fixtures and your ceiling lights. As well, you want to compensate for the dark areas in your rendering. So this is the ideal lighting scenario I would like to achieve. So let's turn off our environment lighting and focus on each light individually. 
as for the ceiling I have my light component spread throughout the scene and obviously we want this to look like it's turned on so you can use an emissive material or you can use a V-Ray mesh light which will turn any object into a light source. So let's select this component and click on this icon to convert it into a mesh light. Now I don't need this to be very bright so I'm going to turn down the intensity to 5. Next, I'm going to add the IES light inside this same component. So let's select the IES light. Let's pick the profile. And let's set that light in the middle of our component. If you go to the V-Ray settings, you want to make sure you rename all of your lights and adjust the intensity accordingly. So let's repeat this process for our center light. Let's turn the light bulb into a mesh light with low intensity. And this time I'm going to add a rectangular light. So let's hold shift to set the size. And on the second click, let's set the direction. In my settings, I'm going to set the intensity to 80 and the direction settings to 0.75. As for the setting, the higher this value, the more narrow your light is going to be. Note that if you open the color picker for any of these lights, you can adjust the color temperature or change that light to any color that you like. As for rectangular lights, I tend to use them quite often. So I've set a few by the walls as down lights and others as up lights. Next, we have this floor lamp fixture with a translucent material, which is always interesting to have. And inside, I've set a mesh light with a very high intensity so that the light can be seen through the material. Now you want to repeat this process according to your scene. You want to cover any artificial light sources and fixtures and be sure to rename all of your lights and adjust the intensity so that you don't create any unnecessary overexposures. And at this point, you can also use V-Ray Light Mix, which lets you adjust the intensity and the color temperature of all of your lights post rendering. This is another great creative tool, so I'll have an info card on the corner of the video for a full light mix tutorial. So this is our scene without the lights enabled. From here, you can use the V-Ray frame buffer to make any final adjustment to the exposure. So let's go to view and select force color clamping. If you look closely, you can see all of the areas in your rendering that are overexposed. And with this, we can lose a lot of detail in our image. As a solution for this, let's add an exposure layer and let's adjust the highlight burn down enough until we remove most, if not all, the overexposed areas. And from here, you can compensate by increasing the exposure and bringing back some contrast into your image. So that's going to be all for this video on lighting interior scenes. And as a last tip, be sure to experiment different lighting scenarios of your own. You want to try out different color temperatures, different lighting moods and intensities, and try to create your next best interior rendering. Hopefully you guys like this video. Be sure to comment down below on anything that I may have missed and I can follow up in another tutorial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and follow us on other social media platforms. As always, I'll see you guys next time.